Aw, sh**. Song's gonna be talking smack about the Pengu OS. Or... Not really. I just wanted to belatedly respond to something that caught my interest. I knew it. So, the Steam hardware survey is a thing. Around the end of every month, Steam randomly selects users to collect some anonymized info about their systems. Then they collect that and categorize all the common bits into neat little categories, like CPU, GPU, RAM, how much storage is used, how many storage devices are installed, display resolutions, your preferred RGB colors. Maybe they are collecting a bit too much data. And then, that data is published for everyone to anonymously judge you for being one of the 30% that still rocks that old reliable GTX 1066GB that just won't die and you can take it from my cold dead <laughs> Anyways, why am I talking about a survey of all things? Good question, but let me answer that with one of my own. Why is everyone else? One of the stats that are collected is about the operating system used, and at least from the Linux side of things, this is where all the discussion and increasingly bold claims seems to stem from. See, if you're new to this irritating corner of the Linux side, um, hi, I'm a A very common figure that's thrown around is the 1%. This is where the Linux gaming user base has been stuck at for about a decade or so, pretty much since Steam was originally released on Linux. For reference, the first Steam client for Windows came out in 2003. The Linux client was officially released in 2013. Don't remember that? You at least remember Steam Machines? That's why I don't think so highly about Linux gaming from back then. And indeed, being the 1% of the audience for so long means that the Linux diehards of then, from what I can tell, were really looking for reasons to have the public pay them any amount of attention. Where not many other normal people pay that much attention to the surveys, outside of maybe the tech press for some casting comment in their YouTube news roundups. It seems like every time I look, there's all this buzz around Linux gaming gaining growth ever since the Steam Deck was a thing. And like, more than usual, if there's even a 0.10% increase in the overall Linux numbers, and that's not an exaggeration, by the way. Oh my gosh, the year of Linux is finally here, guys! No, for real this time, not clickbait! What's even more interesting are how the last time the numbers dipped way down below the average in the span of a month, the Linux news outlets were immediately skeptical and reasoned themselves into calling it just an anomaly in reporting. Oh, don't worry, that's just internet cafes in China that were overcounted. It's not actually that low. But the moment that the role swap in the Linux numbers becomes the anomaly that's boosted in their favor, no one bats an eye and everyone's content calling it the year of the Linux desktop? Hmm. And yeah, maybe you could tell, but even as a Linux advocate myself, I ain't exactly convinced. It's for a couple of reasons, the least of which being that I like being the contrarian who tries to see things aside from the popular majority. But also, you have to remember that the Steam hardware survey, while the least potentially biased, is completely random. The potential audience is always going to shift trending in some direction because of the variance from month to month. So it's not even indicative of the total Steam user base at any point in time. And while some Linux users might say that this is indicative of the growth of the Steam Deck boosting Linux numbers, we should also keep in mind that there is a new competitor in the handheld PC market, the ROG Ally, which as of now is only, regrettably, compatible with Windows 11. Even though the Ally is somewhat of a mixed bag with its own problems compared to the deck, it should be noted that Asus has a significant retail presence. You can just pick up an Ally at a Best Buy or a Micro Center right off the shelves. Meanwhile, the deck is still only available online direct from Valve, so any growth of Linux numbers would, in theory, be counterbalanced by Ally sales. And all of this only covers the gaming market. If you want to talk total user base, <laughs> don't make me laugh those web surveys. <laughs> uh, too late, I already am. It is true that Linux has been seeing an upward trend even before the DEX launch, surely thanks to Proton being integrated into Steam. And I'm probably more known for being that Linux song than anything else, but to say that DEX equals Linux sales is... misleading? 
I've heard a lot of voices saying that this means Linux is growing on the desktop, and that the famous meme of the year of Linux might finally be a thing now. And while I'm sure some might have considered trying out Linux on their main PCs because of the deck, I'm sure many of the people switching to Linux are mostly because of people like me, Linus, Craft Computing, Pav underscore Live, and others that just won't shut the fuck up about it. Meanwhile, most deck users don't care about what's running on their systems. Cause that'd be like calling the Switch or PS4 BSD consoles. I may not have a deck myself, though I'd love to have one, but from what I've heard, Valve has done an amazing job of abstracting the Steam experience away from Linux so that people won't notice it. You can do pretty much anything all within the big picture mode experience, from launching games to web browsing, managing storage, etc all without ever leaving the sleek console UI. You practically wouldn't notice what it's using under the hood unless some chuckle like me came up in your recommendations and told you about it. Huh. That's a major boon to gaming, but to me, it doesn't matter if it's using Linux, Windows, or Temple OS. It's not successful because of Linux, but more like Linux is popular now because of the Steam Deck. Hi, I'm a news. You can tell because I'm wearing a different tie. And as we all know, the tie makes the character. So, Miss Steam Deck user, what are your thoughts on Linux after using it for about a day or so? I guess I don't experiment with it a whole lot, but navigating file paths feels like a massive pain compared to Windows, and I wish things were more clearly labeled and stuff. You f***ing lied to me, that wasn't a short answer at all. But that won't stop some people using it as a Trojan penguin to get people to adopt their lord and savior. And if it's just so we get better software support on Linux, sure, that much I don't mind. But I still don't think the year of mass adoption of the Linux desktop is ever going to happen. And you know what? Maybe that's okay. We don't need everyone using our system for it to still be enjoyable. I feel like focusing on the numbers is really missing the forest for the trees. I've gotten so much more fulfillment using Endeavor OS for the past two years than I've ever gotten out of the lifetime of Windows 10 since its public betas. And Linux is improving. Nothing revolutionary or anything, but the number of games getting out-of-the-box support from even as far as PlayStation Studios ports is something I wouldn't have even imagined two or even three years ago. Like, what the hell? People actually care now? I can actually play the games on the kernel I want? That's amazing! So if things are looking as positive as they are, why won't more people use it? Well, Linux distros are still trying to work out the whole GUI thingy to make them more accessible, which I still believe is an important part of the experience that's grossly underdeveloped at times. But the real reason actually has nothing to do with Linux or Windows or anything. And it's a very simple one. It's you. Yes. As in you, the viewer watching this video right now. Humans fear what they don't know. You've probably heard some variation of the saying before, but it's always true. We're humans, except for me, of course, as I'm just a collective consciousness of autism wrapped in anime and video game references. But the humans, we just like what we know and we don't want to change that. We're oriented around habits and schedules to live. And let me tell you something, habit is a hell of a drug. Here's just some examples for you, some food for thought, if you will, from my perspective. And totally not just excuses to talk about these because I've seen them brought up in comments before. I don't like flat packs. Why? Because I'm already used to native packaging formats. I've only just now gotten to know and even appreciate the normal repositories and the AUR. I'm perfectly aware that sometimes updates might break something, either minor or catastrophically bad, and I'm perfectly capable of fixing that because I'm a stubborn idiot that doesn't want to change my workflow. And also, even on Arch, the problem is anywhere near as bad as it's claimed if you can just read basic error messages. And while we're at it at Burning Bridges, I haven't even built yet, I don't like Wayland. Why? Well, it's still underdeveloped compared to X11, and as of now, I still won't be able to do my normal work, which is recording my screen without dealing with OBS and the performance overhead that comes with it, but I've also only just now gotten used to and even, well, tolerate X's limitations. But it's what I know, and I'm comfortable with it. Heck, recently on my social, I have rambled about something as menial as my notes workflow and how it was so hard to find an app for my phone that suited my specific needs. And someone suggested I use another app in particular. And I told them, even after they insisted, that 
I only just now adjusted to the notes and syncing workflow that I have now, and I don't want to upend all of that setup and muscle memory just to switch to something else just because someone told me to. Does any of those scenarios sound at all familiar to any of you? Because I can't be the only one who thinks this. It's why I make it a point not to bash on people who use Windows specifically, because I was in that same boat too just three to four years ago. Heck, even now I'm still feeling the same about certain apps on Linux, because people have spent their time, who knows how many hours, adjusting to a workflow that works for them, and I can and should absolutely respect that. I could always tell them why they should consider other options, like the privacy implications when using Windows 11 or Microsoft's recent track record for being just kind of rock stupid over the last couple of months. But if they don't care about that because they just want to get their work done, who am I to judge? I'm pretty sure everyone can relate to that. And that's why I think the year of the Linux desktop probably won't ever happen and why it's silly to ever think it will. So as long as Linux does what people want it to do, I think that's more important. The last thing I'd want, after all the goodwill it's gotten these past few years, is burning it all down and going back to the status quo of being this secular clique of basement dwellers, because we sneer at other operating systems and proprietary software. Here's a pro tip, maybe don't do that, and people will like you more and actually want to support you. And if it works for you, why should it matter if it's 10,000 people or two people that agree with you? Besides, if Linux took over the whole PC ecosystem, wouldn't it just become the very thing it sought out to oppose in the first place? Freedom of choice? Openness? Not that it would ever get to that point in the first place, but it doesn't matter if it did or not. So my advice? Just chill over the Steam numbers, ignore those godforsaken web surveys, and just enjoy it for what it is. I can almost guarantee you'll be much happier that way. Now that I think about it, you could say the same thing about a lot of other hobbies. Huh. But if any of this has you interested at all in Linux and you want to know how you should go about using it, Lucky for you, I happen to be in the process of starting a series all about demystifying Linux for newcomers. Nothing super groundbreaking or anything, but I've always wanted to do an overview of how the experience has been for me in more detail and making some concepts in Linux more understandable from the perspective of a semi-competent PC gamer. Consider it like a hybrid crash course slash review series made to introduce gamers to some tricks, tips, and apps that makes the Linux experience better for me. And just talking about the stuff that's out there that otherwise doesn't get a whole lot of attention. So get subscribed if you want to catch in an other potential new video series on game stuffs whenever they come out, eventually. <laughs> And if you like what I do and want to support my efforts, you can always send me sustenance in coffee form, or just share it so more people can watch my slow descent into insanity. You'd be surprised how much you've already helped just by watching this far. And with all of that said, because I forgot to say this last time, thanks for watching. Um, actually, we probably shouldn't use that name. Uh, the fuck do you mean? It's my show, I can do whatever I want. Well, there's already a bunch of other techie Linux videos with demystifying in them. Don't think you want to be associated with them. <sighs> well, then it's my series all about learning Linux. Yeah, we can't use that either. Learn Linux TV already exists. What the? <clears throat> then my new series is all about gaming on Linux. Didn't you already do what? that? Also, that's literally the website you've been sourcing from this whole video, Gaming on Linux. And have you seen the way he reacts on his social? Yeah. I'll figure something out. Probably.